and welcome back to Football Made Simple. Two European giants took centre stage as Juventus hosted Barcelona in the Champions League. Two new managers who have had mixed results in Andrea Pirlo and Ronald Koeman were hoping for a statement win against strong opposition. In the end, the match ended 2-0 to Barcelona thanks to goals by Dembele and Messi. The XG indicated it was a deserved win, 2.1 to 0.32. But what tactics did both managers use? Let's take a look. And if you want a more detailed look at each manager's tactics specifically, check out these videos linked at the end of this one. A special shout out to everyone who's been able to support Football Made Simple on Patreon so far. If you want to help the channel, I'd love it if you considered supporting on patreon.com slash footballmadesimple and you'll get perks like early access to videos, exclusive content and so much more. A quick reminder of the formations used by both sides, as seen on the OneFootball app. OneFootball will get you match updates, formation updates, as well as player and team stats and so much more. And the best part is, you can get it absolutely free through the sponsored link in the description below. Let's start with what Juventus did in possession. Juventus looked to build up short starting from the back with the centre-backs and often throughout the match Barcelona were willing to press high up the pitch. Their shape would usually shift into a 4-4-2 with Messi pushing up alongside Griezmann in order to reduce the defensive workload on him. Pirlo likes to build with a plus one principle so he would often drop Danilo into more of a left centre-back position to create a 3 versus 2 advantage deeper. Dembele was willing to push high up on the right to be the extra man, pressing, meaning that their defensive shape could look like a lopsided 4-3-3. This did leave Chiesa and McKinney isolated 1-1 vs in the wide regions against Sergi Roberto, with Barcelona often defending with a high line. This meant that from deep regions, constant switches were on to the winger, either to feet or, more effectively, into the space in behind for the run, and Juventus did get into dangerous positions in this manner. And when Juventus were looking to build through the centre, Barcelona were sure to back up the front two's press with their pivots most of the time to try and prevent central progression. But this did allow Juventus to consistently have space between the lines because often they had men hanging on the defenders shoulders threatening with the run in behind which forced Barcelona's backline deeper. And we often saw Morata or Dybala drop deep initially to pick up the ball. One of the key elements was that Juventus's centre backs were willing to attempt these risky line breaking passes that would take out Barcelona's entire pressing unit. From here, the man dropping would often attempt a first time pass into the forwards alongside him or to runners coming in from midfield. This pattern of play even led to a big chance for Rabiot in the second half. But the right hand side was Juventus's preferred attacking side. This was aided by Danilo being the left centre back which allowed Cuadrado to be a much more offensive fullback, looking to utilise his natural attacking abilities. He was often able to find space here as Kulusevski and Dybala assisted on this side. We would often see one of the two drop deeper into the midfield to be the extra man, often drawing Pedri more narrow, whilst the other pushed high up between the lines to be the option. This would subsequently allow Cuadrado to get on the ball and he had the second most touches for the side. From these wide regions he could push higher to then look for crosses but if his positioning caused the overload on the right and Barcelona shifted across then the cross field pass to Chiesa was a constant option. But what did Barcelona do on the ball that led to the victory? They committed to building short even from goal kicks which often involved the centre back splitting and Jordi Alba providing width deep to the left whilst the pivots looked to provide the central options. Juventus would commit to the press as soon as the ball was active, with forwards and pivots looking to close down the spaces. Initially, Barcelona were able to play out, 
As with both of Juventus' pivots pushing higher, there was space, usually for Pedri to move between the lines and to look to receive the ball. So, they adapted their pressing shape, and it would be Kulusevski to press one of the pivots whilst Quadrado pushed higher onto Alba, which then allowed a pivot to stay deeper and compress the space between the lines. Quadrado could then take up this position as his immediate man, Pedri, had moved central, although the back line could at times shift to a back three to cover. But higher up the pitch, Barcelona's build-up shape was interesting. In the first half, they built with the back two, whilst Juventus generally pressed with the 4-4-2, trying to cut off any service into De Jong and Pjanic, which they often managed. But once De Jong moved to centre-back in the second half, much like Juve, they shifted to a modified back three with the ball, with Roberto playing much more conservatively to help out De Jong in this unfamiliar position. This would, of course, also give Jordi Alba even more license to push forward. And with Juventus also pushing high on the press, Barcelona had plenty of opportunities to create the midfield overload. This would often be achieved with Pedri pushing towards the centre of the pitch whilst Messi from his free roll often drifted around the pitch undetected, as he did for the first goal. Roberto Deep, as a centre-back, allows Longley to drive higher up the pitch and find Jordi Alba who had advanced, whilst Pedri is central, drawing a centre-back and a pivot. Messi is undetected having dropped deeper into midfield and launches the immediate switch to Dembele. Using the space, he manages to cut in and have a deflected shot that leads to the goal. And generally on the right, Dembele was key from open play, battling with Danilo, and he completed a joint high six dribbles in the match whilst Danilo's eight tackles were also a game high. Barcelona often managed to manufacture the one versus one as Sergio Roberto would initially move into the half space to draw the winger narrow. As a result, when the ball did come wide, Dembele would have the space to take on his man. But a particular area Juventus struggled with was the midfield overload. Going two versus two looked good on paper, but time and again, the Juventus pivots were easily bypassed with a man, be it Pedri, Griezmann or Messi, picking up the ball between the lines and immediately driving at the defence, which would be a concern for Pirlo. Overall, Kerman would be pleased with a positive result and a few signs of progress amongst the side. And despite the scoreline, Pirlo also has positives to take away, being denied by tight offside calls three times. But what did you make of the match? Drop it down below. And a huge shout out to my current Patreons, including Frederick Hammer, for recently joining the Ultra Tier. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple. <laughs>